I'm a fan of Mario Kart. It's broken many friendships, and I'm here to add to that number today. I wanted to try something new. I wanted to try making a driving game. A multiplayer game. <laughs> a game that will give you a valid reason to punch your friend in the face. Not only can I explore my weaker areas of Unity, I have easy access to models, sound, and music to use. And when I'm done, you can play online with your friends and relive some of that Mario Kart nostalgia. No! No! Not you! No! Now there's three obstacles we have to work around to get this game popping off. One, I've never made a multiplayer game before, and I have no clue how networks work. Two, I've never made a driving game before, and I have no idea how driving physics work. Four, I can't count properly, and five, I'm pretty fucking stupid. So it's like that toddler trying to jam the cube into the circle hole. But as carman Elon Musk once said, try. So I started off with a car. If you're familiar with how cars work, which I'm not, they're pretty complicated. They use several elements of physics and math, like for example the suspension. Unity has built in support for just these properties using this thingamajig called a wheel collider, which simulates everything you'd need from a real life car. But after sniffing around online, I was able to add wheel colliders to a cart model and connect the wheels to the body and get a basic acceleration and braking system in place. Everyone online seems to agree that these colliders can be very janky, and I didn't have a whole lot of luck getting the controls anywhere close to where I wanted. Even after lots of tweaking, it's slow and unresponsive, kind of like me if you gave me a bunch of physics equations, so I don't blame it. So I found another tutorial online for a simplified car controller, which is really just a sphere that you push around and the car model just kind of follows it. This car controller felt more accurate to how an actual Mario game controls, and it's probably pretty similar because I don't think the GameCube could really simulate, uh... This simplified car controller dumbs down a lot. It's easy to work with, the controls are very snappy, and no flipping, which eliminates further complication. It's not a sim game I'm making, so the simplified car controller is the obvious choice. So after writing some simple nerd code, I got a timer for time trials. The game mode was my way of laying the groundwork for all the other racing mechanics. But how the hell do racing mechanics work? And that's an excellent question. For Google. I did a quick Google search on the standard practice for how racing games manage these things, such as placings, laps, and reverse detection. The de facto for all these core elements was triggers. Not those triggers. Though we put these invisible boxes in a sequential order throughout the track. For visualization and debugging purposes, I gave them this transparent blue material. Racers will go around the track hitting these triggers. Each trigger has an ID as well as a reference to its next and previous trigger. If a cart hits the next trigger relative to its current, it's progressing. If it hits the trigger previous, it's going backwards. Hit all the triggers and the lap counter goes up. The higher the lap and the current trigger ID you have, the lower you place in the race. Triggers also prevent the player from skipping major portions of the track. And just like that. Some invisible boxes give us the fundamentals for the entire game. Next, I tried something I've never tried before. Contrary to what you may believe, it wasn't meth. Cutscenes are a lot simpler than you'd think. Just enable the camera you want to use for the cutscene and then disable the current active camera. Then all you have to do is create a camera animation and play it. This is obviously the simplest cutscene you could make, but thanks to coroutines, it wouldn't be that hard to get NPCs and whatnot in there moving around. You can easily make some high quality stuff just timing animations properly. Now that I had all this cool jazz in the scene, I wanted to challenge myself in Photoshop by making some crispy UI before we get into the real heart and suffering of this project, the multiplayer stuff. Making a good UI is hard. So I messed around in Photoshop for a bit just trying out different colors and layering shapes differently and I got a pretty cool aesthetic for the UI that ended up sticking. No real critical thought behind any of the decisions I made, seems to be a common theme in my life. Where would we be without the internet? Well, you wouldn't be watching this video about scuffed Mario Kart, but also we wouldn't have unlimited access to pictures of dogs driving cars. Regardless, I didn't know where to start with this, so I looked up a C-sharp networking tutorial and got to work. Yeah, server programming is fun. Eventually, I figured out how to start writing server code without a YouTube tutorial holding my hand. Let's get players moving around. Basically, I establish a UDP connection between each game and the server. Each game sends its info such as position and rotation to the server, and the server sends it to every other client. The other clients get this info and create essentially dummy player prefabs and they write the position and rotation sent to the dummy object prefab. 
After I finally understood how to implement this, it wasn't hard to figure out the rest of the network code. There's not a lot of point going in depth because this shit even makes me yawn. Now we have to spice up the race with a way to cripplingly embarrass and aggravate your friends. Oops, I meant add items. There are eight repressed emotions. Uh, I, mean, I mean items. Let me step through how they work. Mushrooms are very simple, they just increase the player's top speed. Three mushrooms, same as the mushroom but three times. The invincibility star raises your top speed but also makes you invulnerable to items. If an item touches the player, just destroy it. A banana spawns a banana on the track behind the player and if you touch it, it slows you down. The fireballs are basically moving bananas. A fireball spawns in front of the player, and then it goes forward in the direction of the player, and if it hits a player, it slows them down. If it hits a wall or a couple seconds passes, it gets destroyed automatically. These items are very simple, so I thought I'd cover them quickly, but the shells were the real fun items to program. These green shells took a lot of tweaking. Basically, when a player uses it, it spawns the shell in front of the player and goes forward. However, when a green shell hits a wall, it needs to bounce off. So how does this work? Firstly, I marked the walls of the stage on a layer called walls. Layers, for those who don't know, are just a way to mark certain groups of things in the stage. If the shell hits something, it checks if what it hit belongs to the wall layer. In the shells code, we use the onCollisionEnter function of the object. This is a function that's built into Unity and it's called every time the object collides with something and it gives us lots of information about what it's hitting such as the layer and the direction the contact is happening, which is exactly what we need. We just need to tell the shell that if it hits something on the wall layer to start going in the direction that the contact occurred. And then if it hits the player, slow them down. Now, if you're still awake after that explanation, I'll go over the red and blue shells as well. The red shell is like a green shell except it targets the player rather than just going forward and then bouncing off the wall. This is another job for our triggers. The shell tracks what trigger it's at and moves to the next trigger. It then checks if it's at the trigger of the player ahead of the player who threw the shell. If it is, then push towards the target player and hurt them. The blue shell does the exact same as the red except in air, and it always goes for first place. Now I know what you're thinking. What kind of Albert Einstein E equals MC squared kind of shit do you gotta do to get a car that drives itself? There's already a whole company that spends millions of dollars just doing that. So I started off with a basic AI that's somewhere along the lines of turning the car to match the forward normal of its next trigger and accelerate. Wow, those are some realistic paralysis physics. Cool. Cars, physics, graphics, multiplayer, pain, suffering, existential crisis. Why? <laughs> and now all we need is a bit of sound. I've overdosed on ketamine. So with all that, I booted up a server and played some cups with a friend. Is, is it hosting right now? Can I join? Uh, I'm gonna have to reset it. Okay. Cause your back button doesn't work. <laughs> so what do you think? Dude, this is so scuffed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I might have just gave you an error. No, I didn't get an error. Oh, I, I got an error. I got an error too. Oh, I'm on the- What, dude? I'm stuck! Oh, 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 use the pause button. Use the pause button. Uh, the I'm stuck button. Hey, you're good. Okay, Do yeah. I need to restart the server? Yeah, I would restart the server just, just for uh, good measure. Just make sure you tell everyone how great this game is or I'm gonna break your fucking leg. Look at that coastline, man. Beautiful. Why did you give them the fucking AI of a BMW driver, dude? I'm getting cut off every two seconds. Oh, Wario's stuck again. <gasps> Here, let me, ban, let me ban Wario from the server. <laughs> dude, how's he fucking flying? <laughs> how's who flying? Is someone flying on your screen? <laughs> Is someone flying on your screen? <laughs> I was flying. <laughs> Are you talking about me? Because I, I didn't... 
Somebody was flying for a good like four seconds. Oh my god, bro. I'm fucking stuck. You clicked on my stuck button? <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> okay. We're gonna do the star cup. <clears throat> wait, bro, I'm flying. I'm fucking flying. Wait, wait, can you see me? <laughs> no, I can't. What the f where are you? <laughs> Hold on. I'm in the little tunnel thing. Wait, there you are. Yeah. What the fuck? <gasps> Bro, what are you doing? Dude, I was like driving up on the ceiling and shit. <laughs> Fucking hate this stage. And that was how I remade Mario Kart for the PC. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.